Welcome to The Extreme Underground, the show where I take a look at some of the most disturbing and controversial films in the world of cinema. Today we'll be talking about The Woman. Directed by Lucky McKee, based on the book of the same name that was co-written by Jack Ketchum, this film stars Sean Bridgers, Lauren Ashley Carter, Angela Bettis, Brian Rand, and Pollyanna McIntosh as the woman. Despite this being a standalone movie, it's actually the middle of a trilogy. This is the sequel to Offspring, which was written by Jack Ketchum, and the sequel to The Woman is called Darlin', and is the directorial debut of the actress who plays the woman in this film, Pollyanna McIntosh. Hi, I'm Rick. We own your lives. You want to buy them back? And if you want to go further into the lore of everything, Jack Ketchum's first novel was called Off Season, which is actually a prequel to all of this. This movie is about Chris and his family. One day while hunting, Chris sees a feral woman in the woods. He takes her in, ties her up in the cellar, and tries to domesticate her along with the help from his family. Now breaking this down, one of the first shots we see is the woman herself. She's been living in the woods, she's cut up, she's covered in mud, and she washes herself in the creek before going into a cave and killing a wolf off screen. She falls asleep and starts dreaming or hallucinates about a baby on a rock with a wolf circling it. From here we cut to a pool party where we're introduced to the family. We have Chris who's a commanding father and just a downright prick. We have his submissive wife Belle, their two teen kids Brian and Peggy, and their youngest Darlin'. This party was at a friend of theirs, so they go home, and Chris prepares to go hunting while Belle rolls him some cigarettes. It's very evident from the blank stares on Belle's face that she doesn't want to be in this situation. She doesn't like Chris, but she feels like there's nothing she can do. Chris sets off into the woods to go hunting. He's there all day, as you can tell by the excessive cross dissolves, until he finally sees the woman. Chris is immediately captivated. He basically falls in love with her at this point, as you can tell with the slow motion as she walks out of the water, and you've got like this rock music going on. He's infatuated. He immediately comes up with the plan that he wants to keep her. So he goes home and convinces his family to clean out their cellar, but doesn't really tell them what's going to happen. The next day, he heads back into the woods and captures the woman in a fishing net. I don't want to hurt you. Now cuts to school. We've got Peg's hot teacher, Miss Ratone, played by Carly Baker. And Peggy's there just being pretty agitated before the teacher walks up and asks her a question before she feels all awkward and runs out. Now I mentioned that she's hot because while she is attractive, to me. In the book that came out alongside this movie, there's actually some like sexual tension between the teacher and Peg, which isn't explored in this film. So this could be one of the reasons why Peg ran out of the class in the first place, because even the teacher picks up a note suggesting that she's a lesbian. This relationship is only really brought up one more time throughout the movie, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Now we see Brian, the teenage son, playing some basketball against a group of girls, specifically Cindy. He's been practicing, but Cindy ends up beating him. He gets pissed off and sabotages her by putting gum in her brush. And then when she brushes her hair, he goes to help her and she actually thinks he's a good guy. Unfortunately, he's growing up very similar to how his father is and he's actually just a dickhead, which you'll see. Now we go back to the cellar. Chris has the woman bound and he's inspecting her body. And as he's looking at her teeth, she bites off his ring finger and he immediately retaliates by punching her in the face a few times. This leads us to the poster shot. While this is all happening, there's a really annoying annoying tone that's supposed to aggravate the audience, and that it did. This is where we start to see Chris's true intentions, where he wants her and continues to talk to her, knowing that she doesn't quite understand him. But he goes on about disobedience and just throwing his power around before he takes out his gun and shoots a warning shot beside her head. He's once again just showing her that he's her master at this point. To prove even further that he's the authority of this house, he goes and gets his family and brings them to the cellar and shows them the woman. Dad, what is this? calmly explains that she's feral and she needs to be domesticated. And while the women are a little bit more reluctant, Brian just seems a little bit too eager to have this woman in their cellar. Do we really get to keep her? They try to work as a family and feed her by giving her some oatmeal on a bucket and pushing it towards her, and she slaps it to the ground. Later on, Darlin has some kind of appreciation for her and goes up to the cellar door and just plays the radio for her, kind of in a cute bonding way. The dad and daughter talk a little bit back and forth of nothing too important, and before going to bed, the wife questions Chris about the woman. Do you really think we should be doing this? 
You'll notice a trend throughout this movie. The wife is as submissive as she can be. Let's go to bed, babe. Chris, in general, just degrades everybody around him and nobody speaks up. Now we cut to both the teacher and another teacher under the bleachers and they're watching Peg. Miss Raton starts to talk about how she's wearing looser clothes too. And this is where you can kind of see that there was some kind of attraction from the teacher to the student. She's a very pretty girl. She ought to be flaunting it. Yeah, damn it. And it just shows Peg spiraling into deeper depression as the day goes on. Belle goes shopping and runs into the neighbor and she suggests that they should have their next barbecue over at her house. Obviously that's not the best idea, so Belle declines. It cuts back to the cellar where we see the woman eating oatmeal off the floor and then it goes back to Chris at work and now he's hitting on the secretary. Aside from Brian doing the gum thing, this is the next time where we see him being a little bit more aggressive where he has to go and feed the dogs. So he gets kind of pissed off and you start to see his father rubbing off on him a bit too much. While sitting down at the table, Peggy daydreams of her teacher where it's revealed that the teacher realizes that Peggy is pregnant and that's the reason why she's wearing baggy clothes, why she's depressed and often sick and sometimes skips school. After a couple days, it's finally time to wash the woman. So Belle and Chris decide to go down to the cellar with a couple buckets of water. And as Chris starts to scrub her, you can see the jealousy rising in his wife. You can also see her pent up aggression through her face. With his back turned to her, she grabs a two by four and approaches Chris slowly. And it really looks like she's going to take him out. And even even the woman is almost like nudging her on like, come on, do it. But unfortunately she stops and just says, hey, here's some wood. It looks like the shackles aren't holding the woman in place. So we need to fix that. She was so damn close. They bring the woman outside and decide to power wash her as it seems to be a little bit more efficient than trying to scrub her of years of dirt. While she's bound, she realizes that Peg is pregnant and even utters the word baby. Peggy seems to be the only person that doesn't want this to happen. So she runs and turns off the power washer and the woman then says, please. They bring the woman back to the cellar. They dry her, they dress her wounds and Belle, the wife, has been making a dress that has many buttons so they don't even have to untie her to put the dress on her. Chris spoon feeds the woman and she starts to try and say thank you. And Chris corrects her and tries to teach her how to thank him properly. After hours, a couple teachers are having a drink and Miss Raton decides she's gonna call Peg's parents and tell them that she's pregnant. Peg goes to answer the phone, it goes to voicemail and she immediately deletes the message as to not alert her parents. Chris wakes up in the middle of the night and we know exactly where this is going. And so does his wife. As Chris is making his way outside to go to the cellar, Brian wakes up and Brian watches through the hole in the door as his dad undresses and rapes the woman. The next day, Peg skips school because she's sick. Brian declines a date from Cindy and he decides to go to the cellar and torture the woman with pliers. Peg hears the screams and she runs in and catches him when he was apparently touching her and masturbating. They all have a family meeting as they're waiting for the father to arrive. He comes in and immediately takes Brian's side saying, Adolescents have urges. Boys will be boys. And using language and steering the conversation like, Okay, so no one was hurt. What? No one was hurt. He's a boy. Like he doesn't actually see anything wrong with what they're doing. At this point, Belle has absolutely had it. She gets up, she actually stands up to Chris, and rightfully so. What the fuck you think you're gonna do about it? And he beats her up and knocks her out. I can't do this! And as that happens, there's a knock at the door. Peg's teacher, Miss Ratone, has come to inform the parents that Peg's pregnant. The father invites her in. They all sit on the couch, except the mother, obviously she's passed out of the table. And then again, you see this terrible condescending tone after Miss Ratone has said that Peg's pregnant. You're not very good at listening, are you, Miss Ratone? Because I told you, Peggy does not have a boyfriend. But- So you're accusing Brian? <laughs> Absolutely not. So you're accusing me. And then she's like, no, like what the hell are you talking about? And as she tries to leave the house, he slaps her and knocks her out. They tie up the teacher and drag her to the barn. Chris explains to Brian that they're gonna deal with this one right now, suggesting that this has happened before. He ties her to the fence and Peg intervenes as the camera spirals around them. Chris continuously vents his frustration with the women in his family and women in general and his pure distaste for them. And he explains that women just suck men dry and they just use them. They bring Miss Raton to the kennel 
hall where the dogs were and they lock her in there. As the dogs progressively get more riled up, you can see that the ropes on their leashes are about to break. So you think she's about to get eaten by dogs. While this is happening, Peg has run over to the cellar to unlock the woman, potentially in an effort to help her take out her own father. Cut back to the kennel and the big twist reveal is that one of the dogs that Brian was feeding is actually another feral woman that they've kept in their barn, which help explains why this family was kind of content with this other woman, because this has already been going on potentially for years. And the wife earlier even talks about it. When she freaks out at the dinner table, she talks about how he's a lawyer and he should know better and what he's doing is illegal, including what's happening with the dogs. Just what's going on with the goddamn dogs out there is enough to put you in prison. Which we find out is now the dogs and this other woman. Anyway, back to the kennel, this new feral woman attacks Miss Ratone and bites her neck, ripping it off. And in a similar fashion, when the woman is released, she runs out of the cellar and jumps directly onto Belle and starts to bite her whole face off. It's bloody and gruesome and you can see the flesh being ripped from her cheek. And then she picks her up with superhuman strength and just chucks her. With a lawnmower blade in her hand, she makes her way to the barn and she starts chopping away at Brian and eventually cuts him in half. She drops the blade and she walks over to Chris and she punches into his stomach, rips out his heart and eats it in front of him as he dies. The woman now in some kind of power position takes control of this new feral woman and feeds Chris's heart to her. They go to the house and Darlin offers a bottle of water to the woman. She drinks it before licking her finger and then sticking it in Darlin's mouth. She grabs Peg's stomach, again recognizing that she's pregnant, and then takes Darlin and the feral woman and they go off into the woods. Then we get a weird post credit scene of Darlin in the woods. It's partially animated and there's some stop motion, but she seems to be happy at the end of the day. And this is exactly what would lead into the next movie, which we can assume is going to be Darlin's adventure in the woods with the Farrell family. Having heard of this movie for years, it was actually a really enjoyable watch. The entire cast does such a great job. Angela Bettis, who most people would probably know who played May in one of Lucky McKee's other films, her character is so heartbreaking and you can understand why she might be in the position that she is because she feels like she's powerless in this house. Seeing Brian start to grow with the same values as his father is upsetting. Peg having to hide that she's pregnant and it not being spelt out, but we have to assume that the father did rape Peg and that's why she's so depressed and doesn't want anybody to know about her pregnancy. Pollyanna McIntosh as the woman was great as well. Lots of physically demanding stuff. She looks gross and dirty and savage, but while watching the film play out, it just helps you keep tabs on how everyone's feeling at every given moment so that you can understand what's going on in their heads and how they are dealing with not only their issues, but also the woman that's living in their cellar. The movie in general just has a gross, disturbing tone to it. And while this is a little bit tamer, I did feel that this was worth covering on this channel, uh, much like Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door and other films of that kind of nature. Any of my gripes would be nitpicky at this point, so I'm gonna give this four and a half foreshadowing cookie men out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything here on the Extreme Underground.